Before I start, I'd like to say that this game was offered to me free by Gleamer Studio. This game will be out later this month, and I'm going to be jumping straight into a brand new game. But I will say that it comes with very comprehensive tutorials in order to learn. I just don't want to go through the tutorial. I'd rather show gameplay. I will, however, be explaining how to play the game as I go. Starting a brand new game, there are two options unlocked so far, uh, others waiting for additional development, and the two options is Standard Mode and Easter Isle. Easter Isle is a bit of a story and has some special settings like slower growing trees, etc. Uh, but I'm going to be playing Standard Mode. I'm going to be playing on Extreme Difficulty here. The difference of the difficulties is on easier difficulties, it is warmer and you start with more resources and people. On the hard difficulties, it is much colder, uh, meaning that keeping your houses heated is more difficult. And then you start with a much lower population, so it's slower, and uh, you start with a lot fewer resources, so you can starve and dehydrate more easily. But that's, that's my jam. So when you start, it will procedurally generate a map for you. And I might change my seeds a few times. I might re-roll this uh, just to get some sort of uh, sort of ideal start, let's say. So let's change the seed. We'll be uh, sort of, I don't know, Minnesota, something like that. Missouri area, Iowa, something like that. So there are five resource nodes that you should be aware of. There is fertile soil, farmlands, planting there, get additional resources, grassland which is additional pastures, hunting grounds or hunting points. So when you hunt a hunting point, instead of like additional hunting benefits, uh, what it does is it captures cubs so that you can start your own pastures. Collection points, which unlock additional new seeds for you when you work them with gathering stations and uh, fishing points, which increase the output of fish yield. So this seed, is going to be a very farm heavy seed. I'm gonna to choose to start down here. Now, where to start? There's a few different factors. Uh, one, starting near water is gonna be really useful. Water is used for fishing and also for trade. And then starting near a mountain is pretty helpful as well because mining will be, um, you know, essential. I think what I'll do is I'll keep this seed and re-register or re-render new nodes. So if you don't change your seed number, what ends up happening is it's the same map layout but the resource is a little bit different. So I will start, uh, let's say here, near two fertile plots. So right from the start, I'll give you a quick rundown of the UI. You've got your resource information here. Uh, rough food or food is sort of a summary of all your food. Because of my difficulty, I don't start with a lot of food. On easy difficulty, you start with like 2,300, I think. So here, as you can see, I start with like a, a, a sixth or a seventh of whatever you start off on the easiest difficulty. Same with water. Uh, so you've got the sort of liquids, and currently it's all water. Medicine, raw materials, which is wood-based materials, food materials, textile materials, and raw food, like malt, flour, etc. Construction materials, at the start, it will just be stone and some lanterns. Or, and we're mostly concerned with iron at the start, fuel. And fuel is going to be really important because on the map tile that I picked, uh, because of the extreme difficulty, is very cold. 16 Fahrenheit is something like, I don't know, negative 5 Celsius or something like that. I'm just doing brain math there. But it's going to be very cold on extreme difficulty, so keeping ourselves warm is going to be important or other people will freeze to death. You start off with a decent amount of rough clothing and tools, so you're not going to need to manufacture that in the immediate future, and then beverages. Up here, we have happiness, and the happier your town is, the more efficient they work, and the more sad they are, they can turn to crime or lower the uh, procreation rate, the fertility rate. Then health, uh, the higher the health, and health is driven by like hospitals, medicine, soap, bathhouses, etc. The higher the health, uh, the faster the procre uh, you know, procreation rate or fertility rate, and then the lower you might get plagues and the like. And then these both factor into citizen stress. So citizen stress is a summary of all of the stressors that your citizens have, which drives fertility rate at the bottom. So currently, because they are homeless, 
we have housing stress. Then this tab here is your population. How many adults, students, and children? Uh, children that are really too young. Like, let's look at Blake. Blake is nine. So Blake here could be going to school for an education, but currently I don't have a school to offer. Uh, and then here we have temporary workers. Oh, one more thing about that is uh, your adults here will start with an education here, but children that never go to school won't have education, and, and there's some disadvantages to that later on. Uh, employment. So this is how many temporary workers we have. Temporary workers can act as, like, uh, haulers or or gatherers, things like that. And then the other four adults, three of them work at construction, the construction house, and then one works in the marketplace to provide resources for houses built nearby. This tab here is your tech tree, your development tree. Uh, development levels up the more people work in sort of education-based occupations. So if you have a school, that will help your development rate to unlock new tech. If you have a research institute, it will help even more so. Uh, and all of these techs, some of these techs rely on other things. So for instance, this technology says, hey, you know, you can unlock reed. We're not gonna stop you, but you might need sand mining first because a reed requires clay. So without sand mining that gets you clay, you're probably not gonna be able to build a reed farm. So here's the entire tech tree and I'll get into that later. Then you have silver coins, which you can mint yourself for trade and weather time, uh, it's January year one. And then this is the season. And sometimes there will be events like a, a boat coming to visit you or, or nomads that want you to admit them to your town. And that will show up on the calendar here. So you'll see that well in advance. Down here, which is hotkey one, two, three, four, etc., cetera, uh, you've got your building tabs. So houses, or boarding houses for a temporary shelter, food, resource gathering, production buildings, storage buildings, services, roads, decorations, which you can ignore at the start, blueprints, which again, you can ignore at the start, and then commands, which is just basic gathering and the like. So the first order of business for our tiny little new town, I didn't even name it, will be to add some houses. And as you can see, the game works under the sort of uh, grid system. Now, one interesting cute thing here is uh, R rotates houses, but F changes their style. So you can actually style your houses the few different styles that are available to you. But I'm not going to go styling my houses. That's fine. Uh, these houses here will require timber, stone, and iron each. And I'm going to unpause at one speed and get these guys to start constructing. Now, all of my temporary workers here don't really have any tasks to do. So what I'm gonna do is tell them to harvest trees. I know that that is going to be a major pain point early on if I don't get that. I'm also gonna to want to probably get a farm field going so that I can feed myself more easily. So I'm gonna have some of my builders come down here and clear the trees for that farm field. And then uh, let me set up a dirt road, which is free, but doesn't provide a ton of benefit for speed. And I'm gonna set up a dirt road from the farm field up to the town. And unlike some of the other games that are like this, uh, your villagers will actually use your roads, which is kind of nice because there's a lot of games like this where they just sort of ignore the roads. Uh, then the other thing is I'm gonna wanna set up a hunting camp and I'll set up a hunting camp near this group of critters. What are these? Geese? They look like geese. So I'll be able to ranch geese if I hunt there. And then over here seems to be bison. Um, now, the animals will move around. They're not going to stay in one place. So your hunters will travel where they need to go. Um, so we'll put a hunting camp approximately here not work for me. Now, I'm not gonna be able to fish immediately because fishing requires me to manufacture planks. If we take a look at the fishing facility, the cost building here is timber, stone, and planks, and I don't have any planks. I would need to make them. So my builders are starting to start uh, constructing the starter houses here. And then these starter houses, what they're gonna do is they're gonna draw from the food, clothing, tools, and domestic fuel that are offered by my marketplace to supply the homes 
with those resources. My first unlocked tech here is going to be my sawmill. I plan on building a water sawmill for greater efficiency. So there I've unlocked it and there's no reversing this. Once you've spent it, you've spent it. So down here where I have the water, I think what I'll do is I'm going to lay out where I'm going to have a fishing boat, where this uh, fish node is, and then pause the construction. Just so that I have an idea of where I want to place it. I'm going to have a water mill just next to that. Like that. And we're going to get that built. And the reason for this water mill is this water mill will process timber into domestic fuel so the houses can heat themselves. So here you'll see the people that live in this home are going to supply the home with the resources required, like heating and food and water and things like that. So we have uh, a bunch of houses queued up to be built. Another really important thing very early on is a well. Um, without a well, people won't be able to uh, refill the water needs or put out fires if you get fires. Now, fires aren't all that rare or aren't all that common, rather, uh, but still something nice to be done. And I'm also going to pause the... I'm going to cancel the field for now because it's more important that I get the well and the houses built. If I don't get the houses built soon enough, people could actually freeze to death and it would be a very sad false start. For that same reason, I'm going to pause this sawmill. Now this sawmill is reading that I don't have enough stone to construct it. So we can cue the stone up. The gray stone is stone. The black stuff here is iron. I know it looks a little strange. It kind of looks like coal, but it is iron. If I wanted to prioritize collecting this stone over the trees that I have queued up, either I could cancel the gathering of the trees or I could use the priority and prioritize the stone. It's important for you not to sort of overload your uh, constructors and, and temporary workers with too many tasks because then nothing gets done. So, houses first. After we get the house, oh, let's also pause the hunting cabin. After we get the house, we will do the hunting cabin. And then another thing I should probably do is a gathering station. So gathering stations, like most games like this, uh, they prefer to be in older forests um, that haven't been replanted or cut down for a while. So I'll put this somewhat off to the side of my uh, village, which does mean that I'll need to commute up to it, but it increases the, uh, the gather rate for the gatherers that are in there. Other important things to note is I'm going to want some stockpiles near here. So the people that are gathering here don't have to drag all their goods all the way down to town. That would be dreadfully inefficient. And here you can see the temporary workers, the six temporary workers I have, uh, gathering the stone because I prioritized the stone. And that's good because this uh, fifth house says it doesn't have stone. And I'll speed things up to times two speed. So we have statistics here where it can show all the necessary things you need to know, input, output, uh, population, etc. What percent are educated, what percent are clothed. Um, and then this tab is the mini map. Now I'm only on medium size map, so the mini map isn't all that necessary for me, but you know, it's, it's maybe nice to know that it exists. And this should be the second to last house that we need. And since I have three builders, I might as well have three building projects at a time. So I'm going to unlock this big well and hope that my guys do that next. I could prioritize it, however. Uh, let's prioritize this house by clicking this up arrow. As far as I can tell, there's no way to deprioritize it apart from pausing it. So once you prioritize a construction project, that's it. You either have to cancel it or uh, pause it if you don't want it to be your priority anymore. Down here on the left, you'll get uh, notifications about things you need to address. So the red one here is cycling through all the people that are currently homeless. And then down here, it will give you warnings like my fuel reserves are low. That's going to be a very common notification for me to have, uh, especially given my the climate that I'm in. I 
picked an extreme climate, so uh, one of the struggles of playing on extreme difficulty is keeping everybody warm is a big challenge. I think I'm going to pivot and actually put my farm field here instead rather than down here. So let me go ahead and uh, ignore these roads that I had previously queued up, but I don't want to do anymore. So one of the high priority construction projects is going to be to get this farm built because uh, farming is a seasonal thing. It will actually tell you here, uh, farmers sow in March and harvest in September, roughly. And it is February, so I'm going to want this built soon so that my farmers can uh, get that going. As you can see, up here, it says that I'm out of food and water. But that's not entirely true, because these houses have food and water. So this is just what I have stockpiled or in my market, but doesn't really account for what I have in the houses. Now, this house here doesn't have food, and the new one that is built won't have food either. So one of the other things I'm going to want to do is gather some plants. Now, not, not all these plants are edible, um, but some of them are. And I'm, I'm not going to micromanage select which plants are edible and which are not. But what that's going to do is it's going to allow my six temporary workers to start gathering whatever mushrooms and berries there are in the forest uh, so that we don't have starvation. And this last house is just about ready, just about done. Now, unfortunately, this fist house gets a little screwed because there isn't, like, food, water, or fuel for it. So I have to rush to supply uh, for the needs of that rather quickly. And the big well is underway as well. Now, because of my difficulty, as you can see, the average happiness and average health have dropped already. And that's very normal. I don't really know if there's going to be a way not to have that happen. But here we go. We have our our fifth house and that houses everybody and the gatherers here are helping to clear this farm as are the constructors and between the gathering station the hunting cabin the farm field uh we should be able to feed ourselves rather soon now here's a big well and this big well has uh water gatherers gather water here and put it into the storage yards so having a storage yard right next to the well is going to cut down on travel time enormously which is very helpful and then the person that works in the market is going to grab the water from the storage yard and put it into the market later on down the line you do get some logistics you get like uh transfer stations that are dedicated haulers and things like hand carts and backpacks but early on, uh, a lot of this is just manual labor and what people can carry on their person. So you do have to be a little mindful about that, making sure that you, um, you know, you build efficiently with stockpiles where they need to be. Which means that this gathering station, for instance, uh, ought to have a stockpile, as should the farm, as should the hunting cabin. And if you go through the tutorials, the tutorials will tell you as much. So, this farm field, I'll pause just a second. I only have cabbage seeds unlocked. That's fine. Now, another thing to note is immediately four people will be assigned to this farm to work it. But here's the thing. If it's quiet season, the people that are farmers act as just temporary workers. So, although it says I no longer have any temporary workers, these guys here will still be hauling in collection and that kind of thing. So there's no need to fire them from the field, is I guess what I'm trying to say. Now, there's also probably not much of a need to have two water fetchers. Uh, and the reason for this is because, you know, I just don't need that much water for a community of 15. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to have these water fetchers build up a bit of a stockpile of water, and then I'll fire one and put them working elsewhere. I'm also gonna do that right now with one of my builders. So I'm gonna fire Lewis and then close the position slot. Because I'd rather have Lewis do generic resource gathering than construction. I don't have a lot to construct at the moment. And our needs right now are primarily fuel and uh, and gathering for food. Because here we have the first person who's starving. And there it goes. It warns me of that. 
Now they're going to be able to go home and grab some food. I, I bet they just ate. But that's uh, a point of concern. So the next construction project after will probably be the gathering station. That's the next thing that I want my constructors to build. So I'm going to keep everything paused for the moment and just work on that gathering station. As you can see, some of the last houses to be built are really lacking food. But I have all of my temporary workers uh, working to collect. Now, two of my children in the community just leveled up to adults. Uh, that does mean that uh, the window to educate them is kind of gone, but there's nothing to be done about that. And with the additional workforce, I'm going to continually queue up uh, gathering. And I'm also going to unlock the sawmill. So this sawmill is going to be what helps me uh, stay warm. We have a road, and then, let's say, this road comes down to the sawmill, like that, at right angles. Okay, the gathering station is getting built now, has all the resources it needs, so what's going to be important here is that I put a little warehouse there. I don't want to put such a warehouse that I remove a lot of trees and prevent this from being a decent gathering station collection area. But I want a large enough warehouse that we can store whatever we need to store here. So in the warehouse, you can click this button here to control what gets put in there. I only really do this later on uh, when I need to improve the efficiency of workplaces. Like, for instance, storing timber uh, next to lumber yards and, and sawmills and things like that. But early on, it's not that important. Another good technology to keep myself warm would also be to get mining and to specialize in a coal mine. That would be an alternative. Maybe I'll do that instead of water mill. Although I don't regret unlocking the water mill and I'll probably end up building it back there. Uh, but for now, I think what I'll do is just keep it paused so that we don't build it. I'm about to get a development point here and I'm going to unlock mining with it. And we'll try to pit mine this mountain if we can in order to get coal. Coal is a, a slightly more efficient method uh, to heat our houses instead of um, cutting down trees and then turning those trees into uh, fuel. So here, as you can see, I'm starting to get a surplus of water and I'm also getting a little surplus, a tiny little surplus of food, which means that these houses here are going to be able to be supplied with food and water. Uh, once the occupants bring it home. And then fuel is the next big thing for me to unlock. My farmers are farming this farm field. And this farm field is one of those fertile lands. So the fertile lands are in green. Here comes that gathering station. Nearly done. The hunting uh, cabins would also be really good. So after I set up mining, I'll get the hunting cabins to start working. And there is the development point. So let's go ahead and unlock mining. And then we can set up a mine pit uh, here. Maybe f I don't want to cut into the area dedicated for gathering. So I'll put it here. And this mining pit will be for coal. And the mining pits can be improved later on uh, with technology. So later on, if I want to improve my mining pit to an open mine or a mine, I can upgrade my mining pit uh, given the resources required. So I don't need to break it down. I can upgrade it. And there's a lot of upgrades to be had. 
like houses can upgrade you know markets can upgrade everything can be upgraded later on to improve its durability or function of some sort speaking of function uh probably sometime at the start of year two i'm gonna want to get a repair shop a repair shop uh allows your houses to be maintained they do take durability damage over time and they will break down and then become derelict if you don't repair it but you don't need a repair shop immediately because new structures don't break down that quickly so that is something that is a service that i'm going to want to offer up I'll later on and what i'll do is i'll pause it just so that i remember to do it later on but uh, i don't need it immediately so here's my gathering station and two of my temporary workers have automatically uh stationed themselves to work here and they're going to collect uh whatever herbs and vegetables and whatever are in the in the forest here and then i have a tiny little open warehouse in this location where they can store it and uh we'll eventually supply the town that way so now my constructors are working on the pit mine which will keep us warm and here is an event a merchant ship is on its way and ready to trade upon arrival at the port i don't have a port and i'm probably not going to get a port before that ship arrives due to a labor shortage but I just wanted to point out this is the way the events are shown now that ship is going to and this will make a lot more sense once I have uh silver mining and the like unlocked and the port unlocked which might not be this episode but uh I will explain that in further detail and the tutorial has a big tutorial about trade uh, trade is a little bit different in this game than most other games so that's important to note gonna speed up time to times five so these farmers will continue to work this field uh, but the game will warn you that eating a single crop over and over year after year is really not good for your health so monocropping or, or having one staple crop for your settlement is not a very good idea but currently I don't have other seeds unlocked if you want to see other seeds unlocked you can open up statistics and go to seeds and livestock so currently, of all of the crops offered, I only have cabbage seeds, and I have no animals and no blueprints. In order to get additional seeds, I would need to have gathering stations gather nodes that look like this. And I don't... I have one just across the water. So maybe when I'm a little bit wealthier and I have a little bit of time to build a bridge, I can put a gathering station here to gather the seeds that are there. I will also sometimes unlock random seeds just by chance. So it's possible that at the end of this year I'll have some new seed and I don't necessarily need to push immediately to uh, to put a gathering station over there. What I do want to do is to uh, start to get the hunting cabin uh, going. There are geese and alpaca nearby, so we'll get them hunted. And we're building the mining pit as well. Now... You'll see that the average health of my people is dropping a little bit. And one of the ways to counter that is a clinic. So I'm going to construct a clinic uh, pretty much at the heart of the town here. And then behind the clinic, I'm just going to have a open warehouse, uh, roughly the same dimensions of the clinic. So if I, this will be a temporary road. I don't plan to actually build this road. So let's cancel that clinic. I'm gonna change the way it's laid out. Put the clinic like this. And then a open warehouse filling in the rest of that area next to the clinic. And I'll pause this clinic for now, but that will be another project to do once the mine is done. And this indicator, of course, is that I lack iron for it, but I have a bunch of iron to be collected. Now, the other really important public service would be a church. A church uh, helps to keep your citizens happier and not turn to crime. So I'll also place a church right next to the clinic. 
after destroying the road that I queued up. There we go. And I would say, in my experience, the uh, the clinic is a little bit more important than the church initially, because with a really small community, you're not risking a crime rate, but with a really small community, you will have injuries and sicknesses. So one is a little bit more important than the other. I just had more of my children uh, become adults. I only have one child left. So what I'm going to do is put someone back working in the construction house. Get one more constructor and maybe get the mining pit a little bit sooner. All right, before we do the harvest of this cabbage field, uh, one important thing for me to do would be to put some sort of warehouse. And, and this is a very small warehouse, but I'm gonna make it a priority. And this will help to harvest the cabbages a little bit faster so that they can bring the cabbages to this warehouse, not all the way back down, because as you can see here, uh, this is a little bit far from the farm. And if we pause a second and take a look at citizen stresses, the happiness is creating a 14% stress which could be helped out by the church. Uh, health is a more significant stressor, and uh, that would be helped out by the clinic. And then housing is additional houses. Sometimes there will be young people in your colony that want their own housing, and it will actually give you a warning down here. But some of those housing stresses actually might be a result of a lack of fuel. To one of these houses don't have fuel, and then one of the houses have low fuel. And I think that's producing a bit of a stress. But we do have a, a bit of a surplus of food and water, which is good. Uh, very, very good. All right, here comes the harvest. We're going to be harvesting cabbages, and this will help keep us fed throughout the winter. Gathering, hunting, and fishing are a sort of a yearly activity, but a less of an immediate you know, a, a less of a big boon, whereas farming obviously is seasonal, but provides a lot more food. So you have to sort of balance the two, I would say. At this point, I am going to fire Stuart, or I guess it was Cassie from the big well here. Uh, I do feel like I have enough stockpiled water at this point that I'm gonna free up another temporary worker. And this temporary worker uh, will, Let's see, what am I going to need? A little bit of timber. So this, these temporary workers here are going to continue to harvest trees. Make sure to harvest, not, not to harvest trees uh, near your gathering station, as that would uh, make the gathering station less efficient. So there's a rather large tree harvest swath And here you can see the cabbages being stored and then the vendor hauls cabbages to the marketplace, which then can supply the houses, a supply chain. Okay, looks like we're doing a good job gra gathering timber, which is uh, the raw construction materials. We were out and my temporary workers are cutting down these trees so that we can build. The mining pit now has been fully supplied with uh, timber and stone. Um, and I am in August, so just a few months until it is really necessary to be cranking out the uh, the coal. One of the things I might be able to do is to repurpose every single farmer that is here once the farming is done to mine some coal in the winter and shift the, the labor to coal so that we can uh, stay nice and warm. The hunting cabin is almost done as well. So I'll probably end up putting at least one of the farmers as a hunter. Um, and we just got a new development point. So I think what I'll do, uh, given that this community is pretty reliant upon uh, farming, is work towards farming efficiency. The sowing and harvest of crops more efficient. 
So I'm going to unlock compost, which is a prerequisite. Now, compost allows you to have a pastures that produce animal dung as fertilizer to make a fertile field, which will boost yields. But I'm not really ready to jump to pastures yet. I don't have, uh, I don't have enough free people to be able to work that. And now I think it's time to get the clinic made. The health requirements are going to be important. But I'm also going to prioritize the mining pit because we need that before winter sets in. My food here, as you can see, the uh, cabbage is really bolstering. And if we click the farm field, you'll see it keeps track of the products produced. So you can see if you're doing better this year than last year. Last year, obviously, was year zero. So there's no log for that. But that way, you know, the sort of swings of variability. You can keep track of that. The mining pit is just about half constructed. The hunting cabin is still waiting for a little bit of timber, but we did cut down a whole lot of trees with all these gatherers that I have queued up, so should be only a matter of time. And here's a little warning uh, about the autumn harvest. Now, our guys obviously harvested well before that warning, just because I have a lot of people working there. There was more people working there, uh, so it didn't take until now to do the autumn harvest. But this is a good warning of like, hey, it's time to harvest your fields if you haven't already. The last of the cabbages, giant as they may seem. So my two temporary workers here are going to be shifted into the mine once the mine is done being built. And then I might also want to put like an extra constructor into the mine as well to really make sure that this mine is manned and we get fuel. Because currently, I have no domestic fuel stockpiled in my marketplace, which means that like this house in particular, which has no stockpiled fuel in it, uh, is really at risk of frostbite once it gets a little bit colder. And we're hovering around freezing now. So it's only a matter of time until that temperature drops to the, you know, the freezing mark, and uh, that might get people killed. And I'm trying to avoid that. So I have my tiny little stockpile, my tiny little open warehouse, and this is just about done. Miner should, uh, my constructor should have that done in just a second here. So if, it, if I track my farmers that were previously farmers, as you can see, they're cutting down trees. They're doing the uh, temporary worker general gathering here because it's not the grow season anymore. You can see snow starting to accumulate and set in. And people getting pretty cold, so. Come on, mine. Get built. It's tantalizing. It's just, just right there. Three, two. There it is. All right. I am queuing up to mine coal. And then three people are already hired in, Stuart, Jillian, Jerome, and I'm gonna fire one of these farmers and have them work the mine. There is a fifth slot that is probably gonna remain closed. And now with the four miners, we should be able to start build up a fuel source. Um, my constructors are currently working on the clinic and that's gonna help with uh, the average health. And then once that's done, uh, we'll also get the hunting cabin, which will supply some food for the winter, some additional food. The hunting cabins get built. The hunting cabin doesn't rely on trees, just the presence of animals nearby. And animals wander around, so you can't really... It doesn't really matter exactly where you place it. 
other than trying to get cubs. So this hunter is probably going to capture some young goslings pretty early on, allowing me to ranch geese if I feel like it. And this mine pit has produced 12 coal so far. So we should start to see coal as a fuel source in these houses. Let me check. Not yet. I think probably our market vendor is hauling the coal from this stockpile over as we speak. Someone has coal on them and is supplying it. Well, this is all the time I have for this episode, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. If there's enough demand for additional content playing Settlement Survival, uh, I will bring additional content to the channel. If you have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope to catch you in a future episode if there is to be one or another series. Farewell.